Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thundertron Podcast. So today I'm actually discussing and giving you my thoughts on a Transformers Friday reveal, that being the Transformers Movie Masterpiece, Transformers Movie 114 Bone Crusher. The price is $165 and the release date is December 1st, 2023. I will get into a little bit later, pretty much at the end of the segment, whether I think that price point is actually worth it or not. But just getting into, you know, the details and my thoughts on this figure, there's actually 50 points of articulation and 84 steps. That's probably the most number of steps I've, any se- I've ever seen for any Transformer that I've owned or not owned. Maybe there's more out there, like third-party-wise, but of Hasbro, that's probably the most steps I've ever seen, which is super crazy. So definitely, probably, a pretty intricate and long transformation. So if you're into those, this is probably the figure for you. Um... I do have to say, you know, if you're going to get this figure and, you know, whenever you get it, do lower expectations on size because Bone Crusher has always been one of the shorter, smaller figures, even with his mainline releases. You know, I actually did used to own the original when it first came out, you know, for Transformers Movie 1, the very first Transformers movie that uh, Michael Bay made. And it was definitely a smaller, of course, that was a long time ago. But even the Studio Series release, the, uh, you know, recent one, I think that was like one of the first Voyagers ever made for Studio Series. It was a Voyager class figure, but it was definitely on the smaller side of Voyagers, so it's going to be a bit, you know, shorter and smaller, kind of more squat um, than, you know, other Masterpiece figures. He will be on the smaller side, but I do hope maybe piece count, you know, the transformation, uh, the over-engineering will probably make up for that. Um, and, you know, make that price more worth it. Uh, but he looks actually really, really cool. Just getting into, you know, all the accessories and the details and features. Uh, he does come with his huge, you know, scoop claw thing, which I'm actually not sure if is removable or not. His past releases, you know, the Stu series, the original, they were removable. They come packaged separately. So I'm assuming maybe the same applies for this one. I really do not know. Um... He does come with six plastic pieces, which is actually really cool. They're all brand new plastic pieces, which is another awesome thing, because when I learned and I heard he was going to come with them, I was thinking they're just going to, you know, reissue, maybe just repaint some ones from Siege or Kingdom like they always do, but they are brand new, which definitely makes sense. I mean, this is a masterpiece. I think it does deserve it. He comes with six. And you can actually kind of recreate the effect, you know, from the very first film where he's pretty much sliding on the highway, you know, busting through cars and pretty much lighting himself on fire, but he's perfect fine, so I really love that feature. I'm assuming probably how they tab on or attach the figure will probably be the same sort of concept and design as, you know, Siege figures, where there's the post and port, most likely, or maybe you kind of just, like, attach them on there, just kind of, like, slap them on there, and they stay. I really do not know. Um, we'll have to wait and see with that. Um, Another feature is, of course, um, a really interesting one. It's kind of a reference, a nostalgic reference to the Transformers film where Optimus and Bone Crusher are fighting. At the very end, one of his eyes pretty much pops out of his, like, its socket. It's very gruesome, but also cool. Um, and you can recreate that scene and that feature with this toy. I do have to say, I'm actually not entirely sure how it works. They really haven't shown in detail. The only image that we have of it yet is on the back of the box, and it's a very small product picture or, a, you know, a picture of it. Um, it is a cool feature feature though. I do like it. I'm just really wondering how that works. I'm not sure if you just, you know, like press on the eye and it just pops out or maybe you just like, you know, uh, take the eye out. I, I don't know, but it's a cool, fun feature. A bit gruesome again, but um, it's it's interesting. I really was, when I heard there was going to be a bone crusher, I was not expecting that to be a feature, but I think it's pretty fun. Um, and, you know, if you have, you know, the Masterpiece Optimus Prime, you can create some really cool poses and some fights and recreate that scene from the first film. Um, as for the, you know, construction vehicle mode or the huge truck mode, um, it looks cool, you know, kind of on the plain side, it's really just that brown, but I do like all the different wheels, you know, it looks really big and bulky, you know, you can store and attach the huge, you know, uh, shovel claw thing and position it in several different ways. It looks like there's a ton of articulation with that claw, which is super cool because he used it in so many ways in the movie, you know, he used it in his vehicle mode and his robot mode, he would actually use it to try and stab Optimus, so I think that's really cool how poseable it looks. Um... As for the robot mode, the design has always been just so weird and interesting. You know, it's very short, very kind of squat, um, compact. You know, he pretty much has like a huge chest, you know, like no waist, pretty much just all chest. He has a small head, really long arms, really short legs, but just a really interesting design, but just looks so cool. I do have a bit of concern where the legs are concerned because his feet are pretty much wheels and I've actually experienced and had in hand the past two versions of this character, the Stu series and the original one. And they always were such a pain to stand up because again, as I said, the feet 
feet were pretty much wheels. So I do hope maybe they've learned from their mistakes and they pay attention to the feet and they make sure you can actually pose the figure because um, most people could get, you know, the Stu Series release and the original into, you know, a standard generic pose of just standing, you know, straight up. But that's one thing. But another thing is actually getting him to pose like he needs, he's running or sliding or something like that. So hopefully they can uh, do something really good with those feet so he's stable and he can stand. That's a bit of a slight concern. Um, but just wrapping up my thoughts, do I think this figure is worth the $165 price point? I don't. I, I really don't. I do think overall, you know, just the figure alone, keeping the price out of it, it looks amazing. I would probably buy it if I had money. I probably do not have the money to purchase the thing because it's just so expensive. I don't really have the space either. And again, I can't really ignore that I think it's overpriced. I think it probably should have been maybe in the $120 to $135 range. I guess 140 at max, but I think it's about $20 overpriced. It either should have just come with more or it should have just been priceless. He is one of those hard characters, you know, where he really doesn't have a ton of signature weapons, you know, like Optimus has his Ion Blaster, he has his Energon Axe, he has the trailer, you know, he has Roller, he has like, you know, tons of accessories and features to include, so it's easy to make an Optimus, but Bone Crusher really all he has is the, you know, blaze or shovel thing, and that's it. That's really his only signature weapon. Weapons. So it is hard. It's hard to make a bone crusher figure, especially at the masterpiece, you know, size and price point. So it probably is hard to know what to include with a figure like this. Um, I'm really glad they attempted to, because you know, to show the character some love. It's been a while since we've had a bone crusher figure. I'm pretty sure the Stu Series one that came out at like the very beginning of Stu Series. That was like one of the very first Voyagers to be made a part of Stu Series. So I'm really glad they're making another one. Um, but, you know, I had a few ideas, like maybe they could have included a flight stance, you know? Uh, you know, I think that would actually be very useful. No, he doesn't fly, but, you know, he does his whole, like, you know, sliding across the highway thing. So maybe they, uh, people could use the stand to do that, you know? Or they could attach it to the truck, you know, and do some crazy flips and poses like that and stuff. Another crazy idea I had, which I know Hasbro really isn't to uh, the whole, you know, display piece thing where they include, you know, props and stuff or just small little items. I think it'd be really cool if they included just some small like little cars you know they'd have to try they would have to try and make them in scale to you know bone crusher but just some small very cheap cars i know the majority of the budget is going into the figure not the accessories and the small items but if they just wanted to make some small tiny little cars you know and then people could recreate the scene of him you know smashing into them and running down the highway i think that'd be so cool just include like one or two and a stand i think that would have probably definitely made this figure worth that price point. Um, if I had the money and space, I would probably still buy this, even though I do think it's overpriced. It's about, again, as I said, maybe 20 or 15 overpriced, which definitely isn't the, wor isn't the worst. I've seen some other masterpiece figures and just figures in general from Transformers that are, you know, 30 and $40 overpriced, in my opinion, anyway. Please do let me know in the comments. Do you think this figure is worth that $165 price point, or are you with me where it should have been, uh, it should have come with more, or it should just cost less? Um, I think probably the stand should have just been a given. I know not every figure needs it, but considering it is a masterpiece, you know, and a lot of people do love to pull off those insane, crazy poses, maybe that should just be a standard for masterpiece figures. They should just all come with some sort of, you know, stand or something, flight stand. It doesn't have to be the nicest thing, you know, they can just use some simple plastic. I just, it would be nice. I know, of course, people don't want to end up with, you know, 50 stands that they buy all the masterpiece figures, but I think it definitely would have been nice, especially for figures like these where they don't have a ton of, you know, signature features and accessories. I figure like this probably should have come with a stand in my opinion, but uh, please do let me know your thoughts on this figure in the comment section below. Of course, as I said, let me know your thoughts on the price. Will you be picking this up or will you be passing on it? Um, I don't know for me, you know, it, it does look cool. You know, price is one thing, but the space is the other thing. I don't really have a ton of space, so I have to be wise with what I buy, but um, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.